and we are live. What is going on, coaches? How are y'all doing this Friday night? I uh, I am here with the legend right here, the the play fast, no huddle, no mercy, the man, the myth, the legend, Coach Sean Lyota. Coach, how are you doing, man? Ron, how you doing, man? I don't know about that introduction. But yes, could have been better. <laughs> I'm glad to be on here with you. Um, it's always a pleasure coming on talking ball with you. Appreciate you know everything you do for the coaching community and all the knowledge you spread. Um, I love checking out all the guests you have on. So um, it's just an honor to be on and um, be able to talk to your to your base here. Heck yeah, man! And I'm I'm thrilled to have you on here. Uh, before we get into anything that you're doing, because you're doing a lot of cool things, I want to talk about this fan controlled league. We we're talking about it off air. Your 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 name dropping Johnny Manziel and uh, Beast Mode Marshawn Lynch. How is that going? What is that whole thing like? What is it, and why is it awesome? Yeah, I've been you know my background. I was in arena football for nine years as a head coach in various leagues, so I have a background in that league, in that type of football. And you know, I was hired in 2016, so I've been working with these guys for you know five years now on this. Um, what has become fan controlled football, and it's basically football reimagined for the video game, tech, digital age. Uh, the fans make all the decisions with the teams, including play calling. They call plays on game day. They design the uniforms. They name the teams. Um, you know, all of that. Uh, you you know, you can go to the website, fcf.io. You know, if you go on there, you can learn more about the league. There's a lot of um, very famous owners involved with the league that own the various teams and are a part of it. Um, and it's a, it's a really cool deal. And we finally were able to launch last week. Uh, we had our first game and it was all over. It was on Sports Center. You might have caught it on Sports Center. You know, they showed the Johnny Manziel hi highlights and, you know, my man John Jenkins coming out in his, you know, uh, red, white and blue USA pants that the fans voted for him to wear. Um, you know, and, and we were actually the most downloaded app uh, in the iTunes store for about a week last week over, you know, all the other major, you know, sports leagues and FanDuel and gambling apps and things like that. So it was uh, it was a pretty cool deal. Uh, certainly was a good opener. There are games tomorrow night. So tomorrow night there's an 8 o'clock game and a 9.15 Eastern game on Twitch.tv. So if you go to Twitch, you, you can stream them right from there or you can download the app and, and watch right on there. But, uh, you know, we had Johnny Manziel's debut and it almost turned into uh, Johnny Manziel versus Marshawn Lynch. You know, you can look <laughs> on social media. I mean, Marshawn Lynch, Beast Mode, is one of the team owners. Beast Mode was in the locker room getting suited up. He was going to play. He was going to give it a couple plays. And um, he decided at the last minute to kind of step aside and let the, the young, hungry guys that are in the league actually get an opportunity to, to play that super back position. So we literally almost had Marshawn Lynch playing super back uh, in the FCF last week, and that would have been uh, – that have been pretty cool, but um, it's a fun deal. Check it out. If you haven't checked it out, I think if you're a fan of the run and shoot, uh, you know, I brought in, I'm the director of coaching for the league and I brought in John Jenkins uh, as the head coach yeah. of all the, of all the teams. And, you know, he's installed his offense. So the offense, those guys run, it's his offense. So it's not, it, it's very, there are very few changes with the, with what he actually runs in the outdoor game and what, what we're running in the FCF. It's very similar. The concepts are the same. Um, it's kind of a run and shoot reunion because there's a lot of uh, his old assistants in the league as well. We've got, um, uh, we've got Carl Hargrave as our wide receiver coach. Now Carl Hargrave, not only coached in the NFL a long time, coached Randy Moss and Chris Carter and those guys with the Vikings. Um, he was uh, coach Jenks receivers coach at the university of Houston through okay. that whole run. Um, we've got Robert Ford as another receivers coach. We've got two receivers coach. Robert Ford actually coached with the Gamblers with Jenks. And um, Robert Ford has three Super Bowl rings with the Cowboys. Um, so we've got a lot of – there's a lot of run and shoot, um, you know, to the league here. So if that's something that, that you enjoy, it's certainly worth uh, getting on board and checking out. Heck yeah, man. That, that is awesome. Now, I'm curious. And coaches, uh, let us know where you're from. If you have any of the questions, please put them in the chat. We will get to them. Uh, how does the install go with the plays? Like, do you install an offense and then you take that offensive playbook and you upload it to the app and have the, the yeah? So, so for the FCF, what it is basically is every team runs the same playbook. So, there are four teams in the league, okay. they all operate the exact same playbook because they, it's truly fantasy football brought to life. The fans have a draft every week on Wednesdays where they actually draft their team each week, so the teams change. 
from week to week as well. Now there are a couple franchise players where they're assigned to those teams, but, but essentially if you don't like your team from week to week, you can get on there and draft. And, you know, I was doing some color for the broadcast for the draft show last week. And um, it was a lot of fun, you know, fans get in there and they select their team and um, you know, it, it's a pretty cool deal. So yeah, they're all running the same playbook. Um, you know, the playbook pops up, they're working on getting it online. A lot of people are asking about, could they see the plays? Cause now you can't see the plays when you're voting, you know, when you're voting, but they're working to try to get um, a digital version like that up for the fans. That's something they're working on. Okay. All right. And coaches again, thank you so much. We got uh, our first question is what do you think about Deion Sanders running the run and shoot at Jackson state? Is that what they're doing? Do you know that? I haven't seen that. I, I mean, I don't know okay. who's their, who's their offensive coordinator. I would probably say would be, I have no idea. That would I'd probably be the, um, you know, that'd probably be the question asked. Cause there's very few, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that, think they're run and shoot, but they're not really truly, yeah. you know, no run and shoot. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we, we go along. Cause you know, certainly at the high school level, we do a lot of things that are, that are run and shoot and we do some things that aren't. And, you know, um, you know, it's all part of the part of the process. You know, there's very few guys out there right now. I think that have a really good knowledge of that kind of offense. And I know a lot of them are in Atlanta, Georgia right now in the FCF. So, <laughs> you know, um, it's, uh, you know, it's a cool deal, and uh, I'd love to see. I hope they are running it. I'd love to check them out. Um, okay. Jackson State's a cool place. I was at Jackson State um, probably four years ago. I was there in the spring for about a week or so with Coach Mummy and A.J. Smith. You know, I was hanging out with those guys, learning some ball and checking out spring ball. So I was down there at Jackson State. Um, I'll be interested to see how Dion's able to improve their budget. Yeah. You know, because I know when I visited down there, their facilities were – Pretty shot. Yeah. Let's put it mildly. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We'll so just be interested it. to see. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let's see who else. we got a lot of coaches in the house. We've got uh coach Co coach Schmetta Gaming. What's up? He's always been trying to get the come live and it is uh big weeds is going up. He's in uh New York trying to stay warm down there. Coach Cole, I'm glad that California can finally start. You got, I want to say it's the yellow light to actually start um, going on. Coach Bananas, what's going up? Coach Weeks, hey, thanks. Hey, buddy, by the way, thanks for that little shitstorm you did on Twitter for me. I really, I really appreciate that. Uh, put me out there. Uh, speaking of the devil, there he is right there. AJ, what's going on, buddy? How are you doing, sir? Now, I know we talked about the fan league. I want to talk about the you got to play this year. And mm -hmm. I'm always curious how coaches are doing it because this is something we've never done before. Like how how do you run your offense? How do you find games because games are getting canceled and all sure. that? How how was that this year for well, you? You know, for us is a challenge, you know, to be honest with you. I mean, most of our games we're lucky where we're at, they kind of get assigned to us, but we had situations where teams would COVID out of games and then nobody wants to play yet. And we're kind of, we're kind of in a weird spot because we're a three, a school. So it's like, you have a hard time finding schools that necessarily may want to match up or they, they're either too good for you where you just can't compete a six, a school or something like that, or the smaller schools don't want to play. You. So, so it becomes a, a really trying to fit a puzzle piece. If they have an opening, you have an opening. We had one game, we played the state championship on state championship team on 24 hours notice that wasn't fun um, but we had to get a game for our kids and you know we were going to go into Ohio and play a game at one point so it's um it was a challenging season but I was proud of our kids really resilient how they're able to handle themselves and you know we were able to get a season you know we weren't able to practice as a full team until I think August yeah. late August we had to practice in pods <laughs> so that's always interesting if you're trying to install things and you have you know, 10 person pods or 12 person pods, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to really get a lot in, but, um, you know, there were some things you could take from that, learn from that. So, uh, you know, how'd you do that? How, how did you structure well, Cause I know you, you, know, you do a lot. Of how I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's how I did it. So, so we had about 50 kids on our roster and it broke up pretty evenly where I was able to take like the senior group, junior group, sophomore group, freshman group. So the only, the only group I really had a problem with, I had 18 freshmen, and that was kind of over the pod, you know, structure. So we were able to structure it where I could have like 12 kids in the weight room and 12 kids on the field. So we were able to kind of balance that. We would have basically two workouts going at once. We'd have our weight room workout paired with our on-field stuff. So that allowed us to kind of, 
really stay on the number because at that time it was really strict, you know, in terms of of um, the protocols. It was it was really intense, um, you know, at that point in time. What are some things? Because I know California starting. A lot of the other schools are starting in the spring. Washington, mm -hmm. all the West Coast. Mm -hmm. If you have like one or two things you could tell those coaches, like, hey, this is what you can do to help. What 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 are some tips for them? Oh, I mean, I would think be ready to adapt. You know, I mean, be ready to adjust on the move, and that kind of goes into it. You talk about a run and shoot mindset. You got to have a you have that kind of mindset towards your. If you're a set in stone guy, and this is the way we're going to do it, and we're going to start at seven o'clock. We're going to get done at this time or we're, you know, you got to rethink that now. Cause there, there are, you know, we couldn't have training camp. Now, I don't know how was it was like, wow. we couldn't have, we couldn't have the meals. We couldn't have two a days. Like we had no two a days. We couldn't have a meal. Um, you know, it took away a lot of things we typically do. We have a lot of bonding type events with our team, like a dinner with the moms, uh, decals with dads and those are all important parts of our program the things that we do when you talk about i hate to use the word because everybody uses culture you know of your program but uh, you know everybody wants to sell you a book you know about that kind of stuff but uh you know it, st stuff like that's important at the high school level we're talking about high school kids and some of that's taken away and, and just the little things see what bothers me about this pandemic too is i'm a big handshake guy so like we stress for our kids look you look somebody in the eye and you shake their hand and, and we almost like prior to this, it was something we demanded of our kids. Look, when you walk past the coach, you're in a weight room, you shake their hand. You know what I mean? It's like, Anna, you shake their hand. You look them in the eye because you're preparing people for the business world, for the real world. And now things have kind of, you know, you got a fist bump or elbow bump or, or whatever. So those things have changed now, which is kind of, I worry about some of that stuff. I worry about kids going virtual. You know, I'm a big people person. I'm, I'm a person that believes people got to connect you know, and, and maybe some kids that have, are a little shy or a little nervous about meeting people and interacting with people, being at school, those kind of things. I think that helps kids. You know, I think it does. I think it helps them connect. It helps them develop personalities. And now you've got kids that are just able to to virtual and, and things like that. And, you know, I worry about the future of where we're where we head with some stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I agree. And I hopefully we go back. Uh vaccines rolling out and everything like that. The worst thing I hate about this being back in the school is, you know, when you pass somebody and I'm like you, I like people first. I like to say hi, but I do the, you know, the smile and, and nod. Can't see that. You just, you just, so sure. it looks like an asshole just walking by, just staring at him like sure. do something. So sure. how did you go installing your offense? With uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. so so for us, for what we do, it, it, it's pretty it's pretty easy because we could compartmentalize a lot of what we were doing. So I mean, we could work specifically on say our outside choice route, or our inside choice route, or you know individual things like that, which actually lent itself a little bit better to that type of, a, of an environment. Now, if you're talking run game, you know, pass protection, I mean, it's just individual techniques you know we so basically we had a lot of indie work you know what i mean and it would be crazy at some points because the way the pods were broke up where it might be like you're doing indie drills that particular day with three receivers you know because that's all that's we yeah. might only have three sophomore receivers you know so it's um it's it, that was unique you know definitely there, there are challenges involved but you got to adapt i've always been a small school guy i mean i've coached at every level of, of high school football in pennsylvania but i've always been a small school guy i kind of uh gravitate towards that i i enjoy coaching at small schools and with small rosters and you have to um, be creative a lot of times with what you do and adapt what you do and I, i'm a big believer if you can do it at a small school you can certainly do it at a big school and there are pluses and minuses to, to both with doing that. And, you know, that's a lot of what I'll talk about when we get into, you know, some of the passing game stuff with the, with the clinics and things that I'm doing. Okay. All right. And uh, let's see, coach, what, what's going on from Pennsylvania? What's right up your alley? Oh, up yeah. Oh yeah. We love the PA guys, baby. Yes. Yes, yeah. Coach yes, Weeks. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. But still you stirred up a hornet's nest today. Uh, coach Anderson, how are you doing? Uh, Coach Robinson, welcome. I'm glad you're free. You're, you're unthawing because Texas, good Lord, I, I am not jealous of those at all. Could could someone do something and take away the computer from AJ? So how many toupees does John Jenkins have? Someone get that man away from the computer. We have a JT. What's going on, man? I'm trying to be like you, dude. I got my stream deck set up. I've got my new mixer. 
I am Googling how to do Stream Deck and everything like that. Coach Birdwell, what's going on? We need Texas Trav. Yes. Uh, yeah. So let, let's dive into that. You were huge last year. You started, was last year the first year you started getting into like the, the Baylor type choice routes? Or is that something you've done? Oh, for no, a we ran that for a while. Shoot yeah, for a while. We that, yeah, we ran that for a while. Um, you know, probably, we ran it probably the last four or five years, probably. Yeah, it's been a good, it's been a good deal for us. Absolutely. Okay, and what would you say that makes of your passing concepts? Like, how much is that? Do you realize? Oh, you know, so, so for for us, really, I'll be honest with you, and and that's all stuff I'm going to go over when we get into you know talking about the clinic and stuff that I'm I'm going to do because I talk about you know we have a bunch of tools in our toolbox, and the ones that we use are off of our personnel. <laughs> so I think that's probably the most important thing. I think uh, you know I see guys that they have. You know, and this is not a knock on guys too. I just want to say this. I see a lot of guys doing clinics and and videos and books and things like that. And they're showing all 22 college film. They're showing um, NFL film. You know, they're 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 showing all these uh, all this film that's everything but you know what they're. I don't know that they even do the stuff that they're talking about. You know, and it's not a knock on any of those guys. It's a great product. You know, what, what you get from me when I put some out, I'm showing you what we do. I'm showing you our film. I'm showing you good. I'm showing you bad. I'm showing you how to fix things. I'm showing you things that aren't so good. You know what I mean? Because I think that's all important. Like, I'm, I'm not going to get up here and put on, you know, Houston Cougars film or, or Houston Roughnecks film or, you know, I mean, I didn't coach at those places. You know what I mean? I'm not going to put that up and use that to illustrate things that we do. Um, I'm going to show you our film because we've actually done those things. And, and I think that's, I think that's important. If you look into any kind of clinic things or books or anything like that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not big on putting out a product that I'm not, you know, proud of. Um, I wasn't even going to do these, these things, but there's no clinics this off season. So there's no, I mean, I'm going to a couple, you know, in-person clinics, you know, uh, uh, hopefully the, you know, the one back one will be a big one there in June you know, one back clinic is, is certainly coming back. That's going to be a great one. I look forward to being there. That'll be the clinic to be at. Absolutely. Um, but you know, there's no glazier clinics. There's not, I usually speak at about four or five of those a year, Nike clinics. So I thought, you know what, why don't I do my own little deal? Why don't I, you know, put together a, um, a series uh, of clinics where, you know, I'll take an hour, you know, you know, from now, I think it's 16 hours. It goes from now to like April, you know, a couple of weeks. So it's not all at once. Cause to me, that was always a downfall of when you're teaching something in a clinic too, right, Ron, where you sit there, I mean, you really have the capacity. You want to sit there for 16 hours straight and watch the same guy talk about the same stuff. I can't, I can't watch anything on TV for, yeah. for more than 30 minutes. Yeah, I can't. So, so the idea is, look, we're going to do an hour session. We'll have an overtime Q and a, you can ask questions I have a manual that's basically our passing game manual it goes through the reads and there's an example of it, like with our shallow cross package online, you can check out, it's got QR codes integrated into there. You can scan them, get the film of, of what we're going to be talking about. And I'll basically take you through the whole passing game, um, you know, for, for 15, 16 hours. Now we don't run all the stuff in one year. That gets me back to the original point of what I'm saying. So everything I'm going to go over, I'm going to show you what we've done. And, and the reasons why we've done them. So it may have been a year. Look, I don't have a quarterback that can push the ball 25, 30 yards down the field. So if you don't have a quarterback that can push the ball 25, 30 yards down the field, and he's maybe a five, eight kid that can move a little bit. Well, then you really got to work the, 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 the run and shoot style drop, maybe under the center where you're getting them on the controlled rollout, you know, moving the launch point, you know, booting them, doing things like that. Um, maybe you're majoring in quick game more. You know, you have an accurate kid that can't necessarily throw it down the field. Well, then you better be able to flood underneath zones and rub people and pick people and, you know, do all those kind of things. You have to be able to do that. Now, obviously, if you have receivers that can win and you have a quarterback that can push it, it makes sense to be able to attack vertically. So I think you have to have the ability, you know, to do all those things, um, you know, in your passing game, but you don't do them every year. So, um, you know, if I'm trying to push the ball down the field, I'm going to have some screens and quicks. I'm going to have enough of them 
you know, I'm going to have some intermediate type stuff. I'm going to have some, some horizontal and vertical stretch stuff. And then I'm going to have choice, some choice routes, you know, be able to tack down the field. And, you know, that's going to be our passing game. We're going to get really good at it. So it's, it's repetitions is, is the most important thing with no matter what you're doing or what you're talking about. Repetitions is first and foremost. So that's the other thing. I see guys with these clinics and these books and everything, and they got all these different plays. Man, we can't run all them plays. We don't have enough time to run all them plays. I, I don't know how they do. I wish they do. I want them to write a book on to show me how to run all them play, how to get more hours or, or like back to the future, like wind the clock back, right? So we could go back to like <laughs> four o'clock and start practice again so we could run through all them plays because I, I don't know how you really do it. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, so you got to get really good at what you do and believe in what you do. And, and anyone that comes on your show probably tells you the same things over and over and over again. What probably makes us different is, you know, we talk about defenses and attacking coverages, and we'll talk about that in the course, but we don't teach our kids all the categories of coverage, you know, like, you know, the 10 categories. We, we don't, we have that in there. We, we, we give it to our quarterbacks, but we don't, I want to teach a wide receiver to be able to recognize individual defender technique and leverage. Is it man or zone inside, outside? You know, if it's an inside receiver, is he spot dropping? If it's zone, is he walled and in collision? And you know, what is it? You know, wh where are the safety safety on the hash safety off the hash middle of the field, open middle of the field closed. You do all that and you're able to teach your kids that it doesn't matter what coverage you're in. Cause let's be perfectly honest with you. There's a guy that might be calling three deep zone, you know, cover three, and that corner's playing man technique because he's doing what the heck he wants to do. And that throws the rest of the whole deal off. You know, we're, we're coaching high school football. We got we to remember that. So I want to be able to attack individual defenders, technique and leverage. And I want to find ways in the passing game. And I'll talk about this because if you're like me, you, you might be at schools where you might have one or two guys. That's if it. That, if that. One or two guys. You got to find ways to get your one or two guys the ball against their worst guy. And if you got only one or two guys, you got to make sure you're not always putting them in the same spot. Now I fell into that trap before, you know, what broke you, what broke you out of that? Well, I'm going to tell you why, because they just bracketed over top of them and we didn't have no answer to, to we had a best, we had our best senior thousand yard kid. You know, we always played him at the, you know, at the Z, you know, so he's over there at the Z and all they did, they, they bracketed him, they they comboed him outside, and, we, you know, we would try to move him in. The same thing. You have to have ways to with motion and formations and our scatters, our quick shifts, and ways to get them out of those coverages along with playing really fast. You know what I mean? The faster you go, I think you limit a lot of those coverages, and that's why we try to go so fast. You know, the whole reason for me why we play so fast, I mean, even I'll show you, know, this is a mentality here. That's what, that's what we, you know, that's what we do. We want to go fast. And the reason on defense, it makes you so much more vanilla. And and I got to laugh. I hear it pisses the defensive coordinators off because they talk about, oh, no, we can we can play just as fast as, as you do and, um, you know, all those kind of things. And I, I guess so. But if I'm getting in these little tight little clusters and I'm popping out of them and getting lined up, I don't know how you're calling this all these different names of these coverages, Rip, Liz, Match, Two, Hole, Rat, Snake. Thank you. Lizard. Thank um, you. I, I don't know how you're calling all that. I don't know how you're calling that with high school kids now because I'm calling, like, I'm saying 40, and I'm lucky they know what the hell 40 means. You know what I mean? Like, I, so I don't know how you're you're doing all that. You're, you're a better coach than me. They must be really good coaches because we, we're just trying to get them lined up. You know, on, when we're on defense, we're trying to get lined up. That's, you know, I think that's half the battle in high school football. I think if you get lined up and you tackle well, you're in good shape. That's it. I, I, I'd say that if I was the 80-20 defense, it would be alignment. Three things. This is the three things. Alignment, tackling, and pursuit. I don't know about you, but I hate watching film, and I see all 11 guys on the defense just fly into the ball. I go, shit. that Because yep. it does something psychologically. I've never looked at them and gone, man, that's a really good. They passed that number three off and walled off that number two and all that. I'm just like, man, they tackle really well. Are they up, run to the ball and tackle. Those teams are usually pretty good. Yes. Those are usually, they're usually pretty good at the high school level. 
And I'm not knocking any anybody. I'm saying like when I watch film and I see that, I'm going, holy shit, this is a re a really good, well coached team, and we it it might be a struggle. It might be a struggle. So, absolutely, absolutely. Now you said you 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 do you do sugar sugar huddles, muddle yeah, huddles? We call it um, we call it a scatterer. We have scatters. We come. We basically get in there, and it's a tight little deal, and we pop out of there. And it's hard to kind of kind of unique to what we do, and it's kind of hard to see where guys end up at. We do it a lot of times with our uh, gadget stuff or different things we do. There, there's another thing we do that a little different in spread teams, and some guys don't like it, but we've we've won football games with this. We have we always have a short yardage package. Don't you talk to me about the Maryland I. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. We always have a <laughs> we always have a short yardage package. And we always, you know, we've always had that. And it's good in short. It's good, you know. Um, I'm still old school, I guess, that way. If it's third and one or something like that on the goal line, and you know, I'm gonna try to pack it in there and you know, see what we can do. And but again, we don't have a lot of plays out of it. We have very limited plays. Like we're not, we're, we, I'm, I'm going to be honest because okay, I'm switching up this year anyway. I've been talking to some of those Texas slot T guys. I'm, I, know. I, I didn't, I didn't want to bring that up. I that's didn't okay. That's okay. that's okay. That's okay. I'm putting in a little slot T package. Um, Did you actually get someone to actually oh, talk? Yeah. To I've talked it. to some people. Of yeah. course you fucking have because you're Sean and you can. I, no, I've talked to some people with the slot T. Yeah. So I've, I've talked to some slot T guys. So we are going to have a little package of that. And, and here, it just hear me out on this. So like our Maryland eye package, this is what it all it was. Tackle over foot to foot splits, three point stances. Now we never do that. We're two point stance spread, you know, that's a foot to foot, three point stances, tackle over Maryland eye. We ran three plays, a pass. So we ran our choice with the individual receiver. We ran a quarterback wedge. And we ran a play called even and a play called odd. Even, everybody gapped down to the left. We kicked out, led, ran the ball to the right. Odd, same thing to the left. In the last two years, we've won three football games running that specifically where they could not get us out of it once we got into it. Because, like, once we get into it, if you don't, like, I'm that type of guy. Look, I'm going to throw the ball, but I don't. Look, if our quarterback throws for 400 yards, great. If we win 13 to 12 and we ran the ball for a wins a win, man, that's all I, that's all I care about. So we literally have done that where you have, you better get us out of it. Like if we're going to do it, you're going to need to get us out of it. So it, but, and, and what I see football, so football's silical, right? It go, everything cycles back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So 2003, you know, 2004 was my first year as a head coach the high school level and we were spread, you know, run and shoot, all that kind of stuff. No huddle. Um, we would get 50 teams would walk their defensive ends out on our slots because they literally had no idea how to adjust to that type of stuff. They, had, they hadn't seen it. They were old school coaches. The golden, the golden age of spread. Old school coaches, right? 50 guys. You know, that that's that's what they would do. Or everyone would sit in a three deep zone, no matter how many times you would seam them up the, you know, up the seams, they would stay in that, you know, type of deal. Now, what do you see? But you gotta remember those were older coaches now. I was a younger coach going against a bunch of older guys that had seen the option, the wing T, all that stuff. Now here's what you got. 20 years later, all these young guys. They're running three safeties, yeah. you know, men yeah. coverage. They're, they're yeah. running all this other kind of stuff. And guess what? They ain't never seen. They Maryland ain't never seen the Maryland eye. They don't know <laughs> how to run fit it. Could you at least call it the, the Pennsylvania eye? That, I mean, I, we, we call it heavy. That's all we call okay. it. Heavy, get in the game. Are yeah. you bringing in – New people, yeah, we're bringing in new people now. We're bringing, yeah, we're bringing in new people. We have our receivers in there. Our receivers might not like it, but I don't really care. They can sit over there on the sideline as long as we're moving the ball. It don't matter, make a difference to me. Um, but yeah, so we bring different people in. I love it, man. So, so it's the same with this Texas slot T. Now, look, there's no, there's no, re, there's no secret. If you research this at all, look in the state of Texas and all these teams. I think there were three of them in the semifinals in Texas that were slot yeah. T teams. 
Yeah. It's because people don't know how to run fit it and it's a different style. Now, I'm not saying I would go to that style the whole time. There's nothing. I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I am who I am. As well. you, you drank the Kool-Aid, man. You drank the Kool-Aid. But no, I've always been like that. I played, you know, my high school coach was a Hall of Fame guy, Chuck Wagner, been deceased a couple of years now, but he was a full house, dead T guy. Full house. That's been part of our offense. Before we went Maryland, I'll be honest, our, our short yards thing was the T, the double dive. We ran the double dive series out of the T. That is a beautiful And a lot of people don't even know what that is. You say, oh, really that know. is a beautiful series, man. We were a double dive out of, out of the T was our short yardage. And we went to the Maryland I just because it's easier. So my opinion, if you want to put a short yardage package in, go tackle over Maryland I. Really simple. Block down, kick out, lead. All right, I got to ask, because uh, you're now in a part of two camps that are, like, really secretive. You got the run and shoot, and you've, you've, you're you buddies with the guy who would freaking shred playbooks, so it sure, wouldn't. He work. still does. Uh, that's crazy <laughs> to me. And then you're part of the, the slot T who you need to know, like, the, the super secret handshake. Well, I wouldn't say I'm part of it now. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not quite in my family yet, but I've I've – Pilfered enough. You've been to the cookout. You've been to the cookout. You had have food off the table. Him. I've had a sandwich with them. Yeah. You've had some appetizers. Now, which which group of coaches is the most secretive? Probably got to be probably run and shoot guys. I would think. But the problem is, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. Most guys don't know how to ask the questions. Or let me give you an example. Yes, please. You run the run and shoot. Okay. I'm going to email you, coach. I love what you do. Send me your playbook. No, that's dumb. That's what you get, though. I'm just telling you, that's what you get. Like, yeah. can you, oh, or can you send me your playbook? Would you, or would you, no one says anymore, coach, where are you at? South Carolina? I'm going to drive to South Carolina. I'm going to stay in a hotel for five days. Do you care if I come and pick your brain? Can I come to your office and watch you guys practice? and ask you questions. And there's anybody in the world that'll do that. I mean, look at what AJ's doing with the run and shoot certification and the, in the, in the air raid certification, like that's tailor made for guys. Guys are willing to share the information. Like those guys share all the information on it about what they do. There's no, there's no secrets left unturned in those programs. But, but before that guys just think, Oh, let me, let me just email this out to you. People aren't going to do that, right? So I think I think both of them. It's the same thing. Like, why would you? Why do the slot T guys want people to know all their blocking calls and the secrets of why what they do is successful? The line calls and things because it's not the plays. Yeah. It's not. It's not do the plays. Same with the run and shoot or any offense. It's not. It's not the plays. It's why are you running them? How do you teach it? How do you drill it? And what are the adjustments? Yep. So the course that I'm going to do on my offense, the clinic deal that I'm going to do is going to do exactly that. It's going to talk about what we do, why we do it, how we do it, how we adjust it, what maybe is not, doesn't work for a certain kind of kid, what, what hasn't worked for us, you know, and how we fix it. So to me, that's, that's, if you're going to provide value, that that's a good thing. I'm, I'm not, what I'm not going to show you, don't, don't get frustrated if you sign up for this, for this, Clinic deal I'm doing. I'm not going to show you Houston Cougar film, like I said, and go through and and I didn't coach those guys. That's not, you know what I mean? Like that to me, that's that's fanboy type stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm not saying anything. But but to me, if I want to learn something, I want to learn it from a person that does it, and I want to see you do it, and I want to watch your film, and I want I want you to teach me what you do, because then I'm going to take what you do. And apply it to my kids, because I think that's what gets lost a lot of times. So, so what you do, Ron, at your school is not good. Might not be good for me at my school, but I might be able to take some things that you do and apply it to things that we do, and make my guys better, or give us an edge, or give us a because that's all anybody's looking for, right? To put their kids in the best spot and to have an edge. You know, I think I think those are the. I think that's what everybody's searching for. There's no magic pill. And I'm going to say this and guys, forgive me. Forgive me. I'm going to say this. Okay. 
um, high school football. I'm assuming most of the coaches on here are probably high school football coaches. At the end of the day, the team with the better players is going to win 95% of the time. I hate to say that. Now, I'm not. Well, you're absolutely right because in this year alone, it actually proves that. Because the teams that came out, you, everybody had not that many games or, or practices to get their stuff in. And the teams that won were the teams whose jimmies were a lot better than the Joes. And, and again, I don't want that to sound negative. I don't want. I think coaches that. need to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't don't want this it, I don't, want it, sound, I don't want it to sound negative. I don't want it to sound like, I oh, man, what's he talking about? You know, uh, you know, of course, the better play. Well, no, not everybody thinks that. They think that you're going to scheme people up. And, you're look, you can have the best schemes, plays, whatever in the world. When them guys are across from you, you can't block them. Look at Alabama. You're in big-time trouble. You're yeah. in big-time trouble. Yes. So, again, there's no magic bullets in football. That's that's what I bring up all the time. You have to develop your kids, but you have to then take your scheme of what you want to do and give your kids a fighting chance. Like we've been in games like that. We've pulled upsets. We had an upset in 2015, 2017. They called it the biggest upset in our district or state or whatever. You know, we beat we were a team that the previous year before I got to the school was on a long, long losing streak. This team was like ranked in the state, had multiple D1 kids, and we beat them down at their place. We should have never beat them. If we played them 100 times, we would beat them once out of 100, okay? Just and happened it, to be that night. But it wasn't a fluke. What I mean by that, it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't like we had scoop and scores or, or things like that. It was we had things in that we executed, that we took advantage of things that they were doing and we were able to execute when the moment was called. But you got to be perfect. You got to be perfect, right? So if you're a college basketball fan, you're watching March Madness coming up, those upsets. How do those upsets happen? Teams shoot it about 65% from the three-point line. Yeah. yeah. Do the math. It adds up. You end up with more points, right? I mean, it, there's no – but guess what? If two of those threes don't go in, that team, there is no upset. Yeah. You know, there, it doesn't happen. So again, you gotta you gotta put your kids in position and take advantage when the opportunity presents itself. I I agree one hundred percent, and I'm glad we were talking about this because it's it's kind of like to me, coaches think there's a magic bullet to get to turn an zero and ten team to a ten and zero team. It's similar to how people think there's a magic drink that you can drink and you can drop 150 pounds in two weeks. There's not. What we can do, and this is – Tony uh, brings up a great point. Let me go ahead. We are only mitigating the talent difference with our scheme and coaching. And that's the perfect thing. And I kind of want to segue into – you say you do a lot of things, but you don't run them. Like you have a lot of tools, but you don't – when do you make that process? Is it – you put everything in, I'm guessing, in the – summer or the spring and then you whittle away or what how's that work you got, you got to evaluate your players you know you got to evaluate what you have so so again you take a look at what you've got coming back that particular year and who are your best players and how can you really make sure you get the ball in their hands as much as possible and um you know again it is a quarterback play so back to the passing game there's going to be years where you can push the ball down the field then you have your vertical stuff all over the place we've been like that the last two years with a quarterback throw the ball all over the place, everything was in play. Everything was in play. Deep choices, you know, I mean, everything is in play. All right? If you don't have a quarterback that can do that, not, but, but we weren't as big of a quick game team. So let me get back to what I'm saying. Like, our quick game was more single read stuff, maybe. It wasn't as full field. It wasn't a, a full fleshed out quick game that we might do if that was what we're majoring in. So say we have a kid who doesn't have a big arm, but he's accurate. You know, we're going to major more and we might have dual reads, you know, two, two things going on at the same time in a quick game um, might be empty. You know, it might be empty and we're trying to work quick game and, and things like that. Um, you know, that you always have to be able to defeat press coverage or man coverage. So, so, so there's things that if you're going to throw the ball, you have to have that in your toolbox. If you can't beat man-to-man -man coverage, if you can't beat press coverage, if your kids don't have an idea, don't have a plan, if you don't have a plan for that, you're in trouble. 
It doesn't matter what you're doing. And I see a lot of guys that do that. So, so there's yeah. two things I see the guys that want to throw the ball. One, they don't have a plan for man-to-man press coverage. They don't have a plan to defeat that. Um, and I know everybody's going to say, well, my receivers are slow, so they can't get off man. Well, there's ways to do that. We're not, we don't, we're not just asking guys to win one-on-one matchups. We're, we're stacking guys. We're motioning guys. We're, like I said, we're shifting guys. We're, we're doing things um, to try to get our guys in a position, you know, to be able to be successful that way. But you have to drill it. You have to work it. You can't get into the game. Oh, they, they, they're playing man. We didn't realize that. Or they're pressing us. You know, we, we don't have a way to get off it. If you, if you haven't drilled that and worked that, your kids aren't going to have a, uh, a really good plan and your quarterback's not going to understand it. And it's not going to be a good deal. So I think that's a necessity, no matter what you're doing, you got to have a plan for man. You got to, you always got to plan for blitz. We rarely get blitzed. I'll be honest with you. Everybody, we spend a lot of time on it. We rarely get blitzed. Rarely. Why do you rarely, think he does? Because uh, we screen like crazy. People are scared to get screened. We run a lot of screens. You know, I, th- I think, honestly, I think that's the biggest. What's your best screen? Oh, probably one we run a lot on third down. We run like a dual screen. So we'll run like a, uh, you know, a slow screen, a slip screen to the running back, and then we'll run it with like either our H-back or slot receiver. We'll run a, run a little tunnel underneath of that on the backside is a, is a pretty good play for us. It's been pretty good. The surge screen's always good for Coach Mummy's, you know, yeah. surge screen's always a good play. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success slip screens, but we, we spend a lot of time on that. We have a screen drill we do. Um, pass protection's the other one. I mean, I think a lot of guys, they want to throw the football, but they don't want to work on pass protection. And I think that's – I agree. And that is the one thing I get a lot of from offensive line coaches. Like, hey, that's a great pass concept. How the hell are you going to block it? Yep. <laughs> and how many pass pass protections do you have? Uh, we have three. We have three that we use on a typical um, a typical deal. We we'll have some calls, so we we'll have some some um, you know words that'll change them, you know, or whatever. But yeah, we usually have about three different three different ones we work. They do them. We work on pass pro. So when we run our choice drill period of practice. That's about 15 minutes a day, all right? So that's only our receivers and quarterbacks working at. Our O-line and running backs are actually in pass protection. So our O-line running backs, they're working. And we don't – I'm a little different this way. So we don't have scout cards. So we don't ever use scout cards. Um, We may card some things up that we've seen them do. If we know, hey, this is something we've got to, you know, work on. Um, But, you know, it's not something we spend a ton ton of time with that. We let our defense, our young scout team guy, coach over there, he can be like Dick LeBeau sending whatever he wants to send, four to a side here, you know, whatever, um, you know, radar stuff, guys standing around because guess why? I've been in games like that. Yeah. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know what they're going to do. I mean, the year we led the state of Pennsylvania in scoring, I mean, we saw every junk defense you could imagine. I mean, we saw stuff with guys with one guy down, they were dropping 10 guys, you know, I mean, we saw stuff where they were going to try to heat it up and, and come with seven and um, you know, you see everything. So you can't, it always, it always pissed me off to no end when guys, and it's no offense to anybody, but, but this applies to any offense. So this is my, this is my word of advice on this. I don't get when coaches script their practice, right. And they put the play, and then they put the defense they want to see against it. So that would be like me scripting a slow screen to the left and telling the defense to bring four to a side blitz off, off that side. Now, I don't know about you, but during the game, I can't call timeout and tell Coach Smith across the way, hey, Coach, go ahead. I'm going to run my slip screen to the left. So how about you send that four-man pressure you know, into the boundary? I'd really appreciate you doing that to help us out. You know what I mean? So, so – I want to see looks that we don't care what they run. We don't care what the scout team does. We've played around. We put 12 guys on the scout team before, you know, just to make it even harder. You know, we've done that before because, you know, a lot of times you don't get a great scout look. So there has been times we've actually put 12 over there. Um, you know, just little things like that. I mean, I, I never I never like to hear a coach say, oh, they'll never run that in the game. You know, oh, how do you know they're not going to run that in the game? We don't know what they're going to do. They don't know what we're going to do. 
you know, so it's, um, you know, it's something you have to, you have to be prepared for and have answers for. And that's probably the biggest thing, passing game, run game, whatever you're doing, you got to have answers. I agree. And uh, as you can tell, my little boy just woke up and he is sitting here. My wife wife is right over there looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? That's all right. Can you say, Hey, no, go with me. Uh, that's all right. But, but you are absolutely right. Uh, the I hate it when I plan for an odd front and then on game day it's even or vice versa. Or I'm playing for a, a cover two and then all of a sudden they show up straight man to man and you're just like, crap, what do you do? Mm-hmm. So you don't you don't script at all. You don't put anything out there. You're just like, hey, they're kind of an even front. Maybe give me a little more even than yeah, odd or- yeah, yeah. So, so we'll do that. So we'll if they if they are if they are an even or an odd front, we'll stay with that initially, okay. But like in our inside period, in our skelly stuff, you know, they may be a one high team. Um, we we stay with that. You know, we we'll we'll give some different looks. Um, you know, we'll give some different looks there. I think Ron fell off. Let's see if we got any questions. No, Nathan, I never had Tyler Boyd. I didn't have Tyler Boyd. We didn't have Tyler Boyd when I was there. I was there in 2014. We set the scoring record. Boyd was gone. Yeah, we didn't have Boyd. Boyd was already out of there by then. I'm still here. I didn't. There, lose there you go. Okay. I didn't lose you. I was. I was putting you on. Right. You can talk what you're doing. I was just asking some of the. Yeah. I was. I was just looking at some of the questions. Yeah, man. Any. No, not at all. I would never leave your beautiful self. That's all right. That's all right. And my boy's just in here. So coaches, you know, this is this is the beautiful thing about live. He's just going to sit here. I'm just going through the questions. So here we go. Uh, yeah. Did you get to the one about how you call plays? Are you one word? Are you wristbands? Are you doing something else? How does that work? On AJ, so yeah, that 9091 attack. We that, that that's not on the certification. They got to add that in. That's a great play for people that don't know about that one. 9091 attack. You got to look that one up. Um. Uh, oh, so how we call plays? So. Uh, like terminology wise, how do or we come? How you signal them in? Are you wristbands? I'm, I'll be honest, we don't. So we used to be wristbands um, way back, like 2004 or five was probably last we used the wristbands. We are all signals, but we're actually more verbal. I'm gonna be honest with you. I yell the damn play in. You know what I mean? I'm the one calling the play. I yell the play in, and they echo it out, and we go ahead and run it and. We've, we've done that in championship games and NFL stadiums. And, you know, everybody says, well, they're not going to hear you. Or, or, we're not playing in front of crowds like that. Now, if I, if I was playing at Lowndes High School in Georgia and there's 20,000 people in the stands, you know, it's packed, it's rocking, we probably can't do that. We'd have to be more signals and stuff like that. But to me, if we, you're really trying to go fast, you can't tell me that me just yelling it out isn't faster than me going – you know all this other kind of stuff, like a third base coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, plus we're not we're not we have a million different code words for our plays, so we're not worried about you picking them up. And we say a lot of things at the line of scrimmage. We use numbers, we use colors, we use words. You know, we use all of that. So there's, um, you know, we're not we're not really concerned with. Uh, Do they change from year to year, or are they the same thing? Yeah, they'll the- change. Yeah, they'll change. Yeah, and I'll be honest. Like, so I wrote the book a couple years ago and put stuff in there. That's fantastic book, coaches. If you haven't read it already, I appreciate that. Um, none of that still is is accurate. It was accurate maybe at the time the book was written, but those are all different now, you know. And you got uh, to. yeah, yeah, you got to stay ahead of the posse. You know, you got to stay ahead. You got to change. It's not a big deal, but the the the, the and there's no like the words wouldn't mean anything to you, but they mean something to our team. Do you know what I mean? So like you, you want to purposely like, don't freeze and call it like green Bay or ice or for your freeze call or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, like don't do that. You One know? year we used food. Yeah, we've done that. We've done like Wendy's subway, Taco Bell, you know, KFC for stuff. You know, we've done that. Yeah. We use colors, numbers, words um yeah all of that okay i'm a big numbers guy i like numbers i think numbers confuse people 
I think you- numbers confuse people more than work. See, because we could say a whole bunch of numbers. So, like, we could get up there and I could say, um, you know, 109. Well, you don't know if it's really one. Maybe it's the number one. Maybe it's the nine. Maybe it's 109. We, we get up there a lot of times and say 22, 2241, 2241, 2241. You don't know what any of that is. You know, uh, I mean, uh, it, it's hard. Now, it's not. It's a lot easier if I say red delta. Yes. Well, when I pick up on that, I'm a I'm a defensive player. I remember red delta was a jet sweep to my to my left. So now I've picked up that red is your live color to the right. See, we used to do that. We used to use the colors. We okay. used to use the colors for directionals, right? I think defenses pick up on that stuff. I do. I think I think they I think they pick up on colors more so than numbers. Because our numbers again don't make any sense to you. No. Okay, so we're we're getting back around to it. Circular, you know, the wing T, mm-hmm. the slot T. The flex bone. They had a lot of numbers when they were calling plays. Sure. You're you're going that way. Sure. Do you think the air raid had has numbers? Sure. Uh, it mean nothing. That mean nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And I that's the one thing I get asked all the time. Hey, what what do these numbers mean? I'm like, dude, I have no idea. I'm gonna yeah. be completely honest. You need to go get the certification to to figure that out. So, how often do you change the names of? Is it every year? Every two years, yeah, because there may be. Remember, there's things we may we may have ran last year that we're not running this year. So what we might say, Ron, is say we called, um, say our choice route was fifties. Mm-hmm. Say we're not running that this year or whatever. I mean, we will, but I'm just saying, say we weren't going to run it. Fifties may become something else. The fall, right. you know what I mean? So, okay. Well, before I have to go. Because you could tell this. Absolutely. Tell us about your clinics, man. Sure. So for the next, it start the first one's on Sunday. Okay. It's start off on Sunday. It's going to be at 5 Eastern. Um, you can go to my Twitter. My Twitter is um, at Sean Liotta, all one, all one word. Hey, coaches, if you want access to the clinic, just put Sean down below in the comments. I will shoot you the link. You link right. Yeah, correct. Link. correct. Just shoot, just shoot yep. the link. Just uh, Sean. Yep. So what, what that, yeah. And actually you have to, if you're going to book it, you'll, you'll got to go through Ron really. Cause the other was filled up. Um, so you'll have to, you'll have to actually go through Ron's link to, to get in at this point, I believe. Um, but it's going to be basically 15 sessions, probably more than that. Cause it'll be some of these overtime Q and a sessions. And look, it starts on Sunday. it will be an hour where the, there's a schedule. You can see the schedule on my Twitter Um and it, it's basically the book brought to life. So passing game manual um, brought to life. We're going to start off with the basics and go from there. Um, talking about coverages, talking about quick game, talking about, um, you know, vertical stretches, horizontal stretches, choice routes, but things that we do. Okay. So I'm not going to teach you, you know, don't come on and show me how does John Jenkins run? Um, how does John Jenkins run the whatever? Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you that that's not what this clinic is. So please don't, please don't come on there thinking that I'm, I'm going to talk to you about what somebody else does. I'm going to show you what we do. Okay. And I'm going to teach you how we do. Now I've had the, the good fortune to learn from a lot of good football coaches and all that stuff has been a part of become a part of what we do and has been good, uh, really good to us. And, um, different kinds of kids. So I've coached a lot of different kinds of kids. I've coached, you know, really athletic kids. I've coached country kids that, you know, are running five flat forties. So I've, I've coached all different kinds of kids. You can make this kind of stuff work, um, you know, with a lot of different people. Now, some people might say, what if I miss a session? It'll be archived for the people that attend it. However, this will never be sold as a clinic video or anything like that, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Why? This is the stuff that we do. So I don't want it out there on videos and things like that, you know, for obvious reasons. So it's never going to be kind of like sold in that kind of a, of a manner. You got to get on a clinic, but if you get in and you're a couple, you miss one or you can't get to it, it's no big deal. Um, you know, you can get on there. 
Um, I'll answer questions. So we have what we call overtime periods. So say we get through two of the clinic sessions and now it's into the third week. I might do one session where it's just questions off of the first two. And again, I'm not going to hit you with it all at once. So it's not a commitment on your part to say, I got to get in here all 15 hours. I can't do that. It's 15 hours from now until April. And here's the other part I will say, Ron. Again, I don't put a garbage product out there. No, you don't. If anyone is not satisfied, I, I will say, I will be as bold as to say this. If it is not one of the best clinic experiences that you have in the off season here, I will refund your money. So it's $49.99 for 15 hours plus. Plus, you're going to get some written material. You're going to get these manuals. Like Ron can send you a link of what that's going to be. Um, you know, Coach Don says, are we going to get the book or PDF? They will be in sections, Coach. So you'll get them You'll get them in, in sections to you. Now, I'm not going to send, unfortunately, a, a true PDF because we all know what happens with PDFs. They get this toolbox. That's where put all over the internet. So again, it's going to be in a site. You'll be able to access it. You'll be able to read it. You'll be able to print it. So again, I guess if someone wants to print it and you know pass it out or whatever on the internet, whatever. But I'm, I'm not real big on guys just sharing a bunch of stuff out there, you know. Um, but yeah, you'll have access to that as, as we go through it. But it's as we go through it. I'm not sending the whole thing out at once, just so guys know that as well. So it'll be, hey, this is chapter. This is where we're at. This is the material for the first segment, the second segment, the third segment. So you've got to work through the segments to get all the material. Again, if you miss them, you'll be able to catch up. You know what I mean? You'll be able to uh, you'll be able to catch up. You'll be able to watch them on demand. Um, but again, forty nine ninety nine for that that is a that's All a right. steal. I mean, and um, like I said, I I guarantee it. If it's not the best that you've you've been a part of, um, we'll refund your money. I don't have a problem saying that. All no. right. And again, coaches, I see you, Sean. Put it in the comments. I will give it to you. I got my kid asleep in my lap and my cat's molesting my leg right here. So this is, this is fun Friday night. Sean, I appreciate you coming on, man. And oh, my pleasure. This my again. Pleasure. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I think it sounds like my dog's hungry too or something. He's over there. He's just, thank y'all for coming. Again, Sean in the clinics, I will hit you up with the link. Please be safe, be warm, and until next time, let's continue to master the spread, score more points, and have more fun. I will see y'all later.